else now. We are Squawking Dead, a podcast pulverizing episodes beyond the Walking Dead universe. I'm your host, David Cameo, and I'm joined by Gazmo Mob Zero and I, Rachel Burt, Sharon D. A. K. Blazy Gardner, and Bridget, KO-Shavai.com slash punky brewster. That's P-U-N-K-Y-B-R-U-I-S-E-T-E-R. And we are here to sometimes we give you news. Most times we make you laugh, but I don't know what the other one is anymore. I don't know. Just don't know. But we're here live. We make deep. There's not a whole lot of depth to plumb in this particular particular instance so where's um, my soundboard sorry <laughs> and i'm sorry if you don't like the truth <laughs> The truth will set you free. And we're here to talk to you about Fear of the Walking Dead's mid-season premiere, episode seven of its final season, titled Anton. I don't think any of us want to be here right now for various reasons. Yeah, for differing reasons. For All very different. differing reasons, which is a good thing because honestly, and I had a I had a thought on this yesterday as we were going to actually go live yesterday, but then I just wasn't feeling up for it. I thought it was very valuable to think about this for a little while, knowing that Sharon D, first of all, even even before we even watched the episode, Sharon was going to be spicy about it no matter what was going to happen because there was going to be a return to kind of like the old fear in a sense, but with new characters. But I thought about it and I thought, I'm so glad that we are who we are because we offer different points of view and we don't all think the same way. And we all see something that the other might have missed. And in a way, even if we don't agree, the best part about it is that we all bring something to the table and we can all disagree. And I think that makes it a bigger show because then there's always somebody out there that may agree with one person or the other and then we don't all have to be on the same team on this one too as is usual and as we were talking about fear and hey by the way you should consider look at it looking at our blog now that the walking dead daryl dixon has finished all our blogs have been pu- published and what's great about the blog is that you get to see some of the research materials that we've been using some of the song lyrics some of the embedded videos the music videos that were played during the episode that we talked about and even animated gifs right Bridget. What's a Jeff? He's talking about peanut butter again. So weird that he always yeah. does that. Ugh, peanut butter's gross. So you should check out our blog because it has lots of peanut butter. Are you playing defense this episode? Is that what I heard? If you're on YouTube, by the way, and you're seeing the logo that's just above my head, that is going to be the new logo design for our Fear the Walking Dead Season 8B shirts, mugs, etc. It's that nice highlighter yellow from the key art. Look out for our social media promoting that plus other things. We haven't really posted the merch for our Walking to Daryl Dixon on the internet, I don't think, if I'm not mistaken. So look out for that at some point. I will do it at the time when, when there's a sale, an actual sale going on, so that you can grab your hands on that. In the meantime, we're going to be working on the art for this part of the season. We do have a design up for sale from the first half of the season where it was all about the birds. And so there was a bird theme going on there and a marsh, as is usual. So check that out. I really want the Carol walking the Walker Daryl shirt. <laughs> I really, I really it's so want great. that. Hey, it's so great. fill out the form. And if you're a survivor, and whispers to your member you get 50% off in the merch store so consider filling that out you can sign up for that merch in Kofi shop actually and if you're whispers and survivors to your member you can get to that shop item ko-fi.com slash walking dead head to the shop and you'll see it under exclusives. My wife actually, before we got on, she's like, hey, I really like the way this looks. This is our Fear the Walking Dead Season 6 design. And I'm wearing the Fear the Walking Dead Season 6 hat that you can't get. But you can get this shirt. And this is the old style. We re-uploaded this design, this Fear the Walking Dead 6 design with a new font, the We Are Squawking Dead font. So you can grab that. And in this sage color too, which matches very well with this shirt. I'm touching my boobs. I know you're, Rachel's like, oh, why is he touching his boobs? I don't know, man. Lois says she needs some shorts. So she mentioned that once, and you know what? I some shorts. You know what? Do them like juicy couture style, and it just says "squawking dead" on your cheeks. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> it should just say "squawking." I don't think. It yeah, no, the one. Is a or just squawk. It sounds like a. Yeah, the one side like will say body. squawk. It sounds like a body function. Squawk. <laughs> Squawk. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on to first impressions. We had to ruin it somehow, and it wasn't me this time. <laughs> <laughs> so so here's what I'd like to do for this episode, considering a lot, and I'm sure that we all have a lot to say, but I think it might pay to get a lot of the poison out. <laughs> So we can maybe touch on things that may have some sort of redeeming quality. And to that end, I say, Sharon D., what were your first impressions of this episode? (laughs) 
Oh, yeah, we have hoodies, Jason, by the way. As you know, Dave, I stopped watching about 30 minutes into it. Like, I just turned it off. The first watch. Yeah, I was like, what? Can't even with this. What? So I had mentioned this to Dave, and he's like, just just keep watching. You might like it a little bit better, which by that he meant June shows up, I'm sure. Yeah, that's all I meant. (laughs) That's all I meant, literally. My complaint at the beginning of the season was they started it with just two people. And maybe they heard me because this time they made sure everybody was in it, even if it was only for five seconds. Everybody had one line. Did June even have a line? Yeah. June said, don't move or stop or something like that like oh that's what our action figures should say (laughs) so i like the loop that they're showing i like the callbacks to the tower and to some other things like oh yeah there were callbacks to a lot of things which we'll talk about and you and me both saw that. that right I did enjoy that aspect of it. Um, you know, Strand and Madison are not my favorite characters. Like, Madison is not my, f- I don't even want to say not my favorite. I despise Madison, especially after this episode. <laughs> like, I despise her so much. I want to just reach through the screen and throttle her. I hate her so much. And it has nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with stuff that happened before. This this is based on this season, mainly. Aside from June showing up, the best part of this episode was Troy. I mm. dig Troy. I was like, yeah, I like him a lot. He's funny. Well, and, and you never got up to the point where you saw him no i never saw him in the original i think you would have liked that actually now that i'm thinking about it old troy yeah i was like troy is he's funny like i admit my eyesight isn't what it used to be you know like (laughs) that was so funny and then daniel's line when strand said thank you old friends he says we're not friends that legitimately made me laugh out loud when i watched it through the first time i completely missed it too (laughs) it was so good it was so good i feel like daniel has said that to him before maybe even a couple times before (laughs) it was so funny Thank you, old friend. We're not friends. Okay. We're not friends. <laughs> but no. I still have the same issue that I had at the first half of the season. Who is writing this? Is it five-year-olds on... AI. Right? Is it AI? Is it five-year-olds <laughs> on Benadryl or something? Like, well, let who me remind is you writing this? What we, had, what we had said, I think it was at the mid-season finale, which was... Uh, so at first it was, uh, I think it was Jacob Pinion and, and all of them in the writer's room. But uh, Andrew, Andrew and Ian actually wrote the last half of the season. Now, Hmm. Can we address this one bit, though? Hmm. Because I had thought about this and I'm not really sure what to make of it because we had said something similar to this in the first half, which was it seems as though they had a vision and maybe that vision was cut short considering the, the run that they might, they thought they may have had, but then they cut it short. So they had mm-hmm. to kind of scrape together what was left. It's giving beginning of season 11. 11 of, of The Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. I right. am not talking about the story arc or anything like that. I am talking about the dialogue. I think that affects everything, though. It's the same thing that we said last season. Yeah. Show, don't tell. They I agree. explain I agree. everything to us like we're idiots. I wish that they actually showed us some of this stuff, too. I thought about this, actually, too. Tell me if you agree. For some of you who were invested in seasons one through three, the fact that we didn't get the dam incident, the fact that we didn't know what happened what happened after the dam incident, we didn't know what happened to Madison after, and they said they would tell us what happened to Madison after the stadium burned down. Things like that and going back to that, all of the season has been emblematic of that, of just this lack of just this, okay, we're going to retread by way of dialogue things that happened that we didn't see. And then you're going to expect us to, to be okay with that. Well, there's only so much okay we can be okay with, right? Speaking of that, we did get a wrap up on the people that we were missing. They didn't bother to mention them by name. Are you basing that off of the wiki? No, I'm basing okay. that off what Strand said. In the episode. But he never mentioned specifics. He said the people that I, were, I was on the rafts with i tried to help them and they wouldn't let me because they couldn't forgive me and when i came back from trying to find food they were all dead and walkers and he was on the rafts with them right Right. so uh, some of them went to padre the other ones went with him so who's left obviously sarah and wendell didn't go with padre they were with strand and so they're they're all dead and they didn't bother to mention them by name they just are like here everybody's complaining because we didn't say anything about mo collins or daryl chill mitchell so here they they're dead they're dead no there you go the rabbi Based on Charlie. that vague language, yeah. they've already updated the wiki for the, you know, that Walking Dead fandom wiki sort of thing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I know that Takira put a screenshot up on, in one of the groups. Actually, Linda Jennings from, was it Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead? I forget what the, what her group is actually, but I'll put it in the blog. But she had posted the screenshot of the wiki based on those words alone. And I'm not sure how to feel about it because if no names are specified, they're confirming that specific characters like... Rabbi Kessner, like Sarah, like Wendell, are Charlie. confirmed deceased. And that bothers me because
because a wiki is made by fans. It's not made by the show. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds very naive of me, but I'm very evidence based. Even if he says those people that ended up washing ashore with me died, there were a whole bunch more people than Sarah, just Sarah and Wendell. And we also know Victor's a huge liar. But why would he lie about that? They didn't know those people. He specifically said some went to Padre, some went with me. Well, washed with him, yeah. Washed up. But do you think that that is the sum total of the entire group? That's the thing. I think he's talking about our people. Oh boy. They heard us complaining about not saying anything, so they just threw it out. There you go. There. Bridget, what do you guys. think? She's like giving. She because she's looking at the chat and she's like, Thomas, Dave, stop ignoring me. I'm like, I'm looking well, at so the we're chat. We're having, a, we're having, you're interrupting. We're, we're having a conversation right now, Thomas. Okay. So, I'm right. sorry. Eric just asked if I was drinking out of a boot bucket. <laughs> yes. She's Which drinking I'm out of a casino bucket. I'm not. This is a casino bucket, but yeah. I have boot buckets right behind me. And I was just <laughs> telling Travis earlier today that I have to go to McDonald's tomorrow because they have a new vampire one and I need it. <laughs> You know what you should get, Bridget? You should get one of those Patriot Supply buckets and drink out of that. You know those big slop I, buckets? Yeah, I do Mac have. I have one of the small ones, Dave. <laughs> I have one of the small. Ones. I know you do. I'm a prepper, like, Dave. This <laughs> makes the joke very. <laughs> mm. Anyway, all right. So, all right. So we got your first impression and then some. Let's turn it to Bridget because yes, as someone who is a huge fan. Of, I mean, and Rachel, I think you were a fan of seasons one through three as well right not mistaken um I except for madison <laughs> i know but <laughs> i love my girl alicia but I, anyway i watched them i watched them there were some all right hey bridget so hey i, <laughs> was, I was a fan i was a fan i was a of fan this episode of specific characters and and they weren't necessarily madison because she's always been really self-sabotaging which is that's a hard quality for me to look past it's the downfall of a lot of television shows I feel and it, sometimes it makes it hard to kind of look I don't know that quality is just like it's not it's not attractive when it's in a person that you know and then when it's someone that you're like watching voluntarily every week even more so <laughs> so <laughs> you're supposed to root for them and yet you find it yeah, hard and then you're like but why am I rooting for you like why do you keep making these stupid decisions I did not love it I didn't hate it somewhere in between it feels like it was like a fever dream, but to be fair, I've been sick endlessly for days. So like maybe it was. It's relevant. Uh, <laughs> so it was just right. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I was so happy to see Strand. Coleman, I felt like really knocked out of the park in this episode. There was some really solid acting from him. Usually I really detest Strand, but I actually kind of, I mean, I was pulling. Did you feel something? This episode. Yeah. I found, yeah, I found I it all very endearing. Like part of the reason I'm so disgusted with Madison in this episode is for the way she was treating strand yes 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 damn that you was... madison for making me a strand apologist <laughs> i mean come on i've always liked strand even though he's done people dirty and he's the character that i like rooting for even though he is always doing the wrong thing it's different than the self-sabotaging because like he's a con man so what it's do you different. expect it's the, uh, it's the low it's a bigotry of low expectations bridget weirdly i wasn't excited for troy to come back i was very vocal about how angry I was about this choice but talk about chewing the scenery it's like he didn't have to do anything and yet <laughs> he, he did. hammed it up so hard it was so good well it's it, like the mini headed hydra they cut the head off a strand and Troy popped up in his place <laughs> it was so good it was so <laughs> they cut the head off of Jenny and then strand popped up in his place and they cut the head off strand and Troy popped up in his place <laughs> it was I better lost than the I thread expected there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was better than I expected <laughs> So I am left feeling disappointed in certain things and we can get to that as we talk about it. I'm sure the things I've been disappointed in will come up. Uh, I think there was just some generally weird stuff in this episode that I'm sure will come up. But yeah, I was I was so excited to see Coleman that I'm like, well, it all can it. be forgiven. <laughs> <Worth> it, worth <laughs> also, Frank. Whew. Oh, that is yeah. a good looking man. And he didn't die. I was not mad. You know, we got a character that along on the way? and learned their name and he didn't die. I know. And the community didn't completely fall apart. I mean, they're leaving. They are but... moving than the Padre. So everybody clapping emojis for the community's not falling. People die, not dying. 
every episode <laughs> since season the top of season seven, essentially. I know that people are upset about I just want to address this really quickly because I just saw Walani's comment. Troy's live, everyone else is dead, not liking that. I know that you guys are upset about this. We have known this for a while. So I've had yeah. time to process all of this about like these characters not coming back. This was shared with us. It was shared with a lot of people actually at a convention that we attended. Well, yeah. Beans were spilled. And if you want to watch that, you can actually watch that panel with Mo Collins. Yes. Wink, wink. Yeah. And so I've had I've had a lot of time to like kind of process through that. Don't get me wrong. It was furious. We all were when that was confirmed. And I think we kind of left it hoping maybe it's like they're just unconfirmed. They're out there somewhere. I would resign myself to that. So I'm going to still stand by that. I don't care what these idiots said. I don't care what this one off line is. That's my headcanon. And that is the world I'm in a, of delusion I'm going to live in. So yeah, we saw Sarah in The wa- in Walking Dead Daryl Dixon. Yeah, I'm so sorry. If you look, if you <laughs> yeah. look at the blog, I did yeah. post a screenshot of the shot of the, the woman that you talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I posted right? it in the blog. There's a, there's a little clip of it's not her. I I actually no, clipped no. out the one clip of her really not looking like her. But like it looks Sarah. enough like her where I was like, huh? what? I, initially, because all you see is a dra- a hair, a drape of, of hair, and, and the blonde same color hair. hat. She mm, it's not the same color there. hat though. She could have made it there. Very similar. It's a. Very it was like a greenish khaki. No, hat. no, it was like a the, green. No, no, the girl I saw green. had like a had like a bur- like a like a faded burgundy hat. Just just look at the blog, and you confirm with me that that's the right one. Maybe, yeah, maybe you I saw think it different. Is. Maybe you well, saw listen, different we want to see her. This is me. I'm acknowledging that. I maybe my see brain's her. just like, no, it's bur- <laughs> it's the right color. <laughs> Thomas said Troy being alive is dumb. No way he would have survived the hammer and a damn explosion. And why did he getting hit in the head turn his eye blue? Did it like drain the color out of the <laughs> iris or something? How did how did that happen? Just who says it's a real eye moment (laughs) it looks like a glass eye glass eyes don't move (laughs) when when he looks from side to side a glass eye wouldn't move his eye is that was the case that would have been even cooler actually rachel what are your first impressions of this episode pass oh pass (laughs) hated it (laughs) hated it (laughs) three snaps up I remember what I wanted to say, actually, and it was not the kind of person who's quick to anger. So I remember when the feeling that sh- that Sarah slash Mo would not be back on the show, when that first came up, I was kind of like, okay, maybe, maybe not. Okay, I don't know. How do I feel about this? Will the story be good still? And then we found out the story wasn't the best. And then we come here and then we get this episode. And I'm going to say, I don't dislike this episode. I did like seeing Victor and Madison reunite because it was one of the things I really wanted to see eventually. And I like that they also didn't give me what I wanted, which was a tearful, tearful reunion, a bit of that, but not really. Yeah. Madison and Alicia reunited too, hand in well- hand. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you dirty dog. Yikes. What a dirty, dirty bitch. <laughs> <Anyways>. <laughs> oh my gosh. But over time, I've actually gotten a little bit more angry. And because of that line in this episode of, oh, all of them died. And then it's almost as if, and look, all of these episodes are in the can anyway. So there's like, okay, it's not as if they could have taken our reactions from the first half and said, well, maybe we shouldn't put this scene in the show. Maybe it would be better to not say anything at all. So that in our head canon, as Bridget would say, say most often we could say oh sarah drifted on with wendell somewhere else but now it's almost as if like <laughs> it's like deal with it your favorite characters died for nothing deal with it and i i'm having a problem with that and i don't know how i'm going to be able to deal with it see my problem isn't even storyline wise i'm just pissed what they did to my friend see and i'm taking it the other way i'm throwing it in in the story i want to say what this doesn't make sense g wilson said in the chat because i thought this was a really good way to put this i understand okay. some characters characters not trusting strand but it feels like the characters who died off screen basically chose death in a sense when they could have made it at least a day longer when you Mm. simplify it to that one line makes everything seem so meaningless they would rather die than you hate strand Strand that much like i get (laughs) he's a con man and he's he has conned people over and over and over again some of you only interacted with him for like a brief time it's not like you got eight seasons of him like we did Mm -hmm. you know they don't Mm. have all of that exposure like we do they have very little exposure to him so i don't understand why if it comes down to dying or taking something from someone that has been like a huge annoyance and enemy to me like i'm probably gonna take the thing from my enemy and then be like dang i I just 
just feel like that's again it's just another instance of bad writing like they were like fine you guys want to know what happened to him here take that suck on it this is what you get that's kind of what i'm saying is like yeah. okay are they suddenly and me? i don't like that it's just narratively yeah. it just it's just kind of an insult i also Isn't don't know it? how much i really believe strand why would he lie he would lie about that to make himself feel better like i tried to save them this is going to go to my next point oh yeah it's been seven years and that's a long mm-hmm. time and even more so i don't think victor has even seen troy for at least nine if not more years i do want to point out something thomas said earlier which is Dene- denai garcia is the yes. director of this episode. directed this episode yes. and you, you know i had no directed issue the hell out of it yeah the direction was fine the acting yeah mostly was fine it's the script it's all the writing everybody on the crew did a great job the, all, the, the best walkers with, with were great hand. yeah everything was great except the, the dialogue and the script itself yeah this was going to also be my point too is that what i was trying to say before about did they know how many episodes they were going to get did they know exactly when the mid-season was going to be because when we came back okay look admittedly victor seeing victor again great seeing victor and madison reunite great and then they do the twist between that and then the Troy thing and then seeing seeing Daniel a little bit that was kind of cool but beyond that and I think we said this about the first episode of the season you want to start off with a bang and like for your mid-season break coming back from the mid-season break of the final episodes you want all your episodes That's to be what a bang Strand said. yeah <laughs> well wouldn't you though I agree with Lois Lois says I feel like they have just thrown the ending together and they really don't care that's exactly how I feel I, I honestly felt that way they are like we bit. don't give a crap about this show anymore so just throw some shit on the page and they'll take it. It's ending anyway. Why do we care? Just throw it away. They're Game of thrones in it. Especially in comparison with Daryl Dixon. Same universe. Why is that show so much better than Fear? Don't make me answer that question. I am angry at the disparity in quality between the shows because it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, and it's one thing if a show has a different quality or a different feel to it. And obviously, they're being consistent, even though it's consistently not great. Even I'm admitting it. I will say, I did like some of the scenes that were in the upcom- the at least the upcoming episodes or at least the next episode. I can't I don't know exactly what we saw at the end of the episode. I know some of you don't watch it. I'm not going to say what it is for those of you who don't want to know what it is. So you're welcome. Oh, well, some of us have seen the teaser leading into the season and I like what I saw. It's looking pretty cool what they're trying to develop. So I'm going to do my best here to reserve judgment for the rest of the season, even though I just like you when I was watching this episode, I was like, oh, they really look like they're I mean, aside from a couple of things, they're kind of phoning it in, isn't aren't they? Yeah, they're they are. And I'm not talking about the actor. Like Bridget said, Coleman was fantastic. Yeah. He was Coleman fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I mean, everybody in the little bit that they had, except for one person. Everybody who would great. that be? No, I'm kidding. One block of wood we won't mention by name. <laughs> it's fine. We all know who you're talking about. <laughs> okay, so let's re- let's read a few, couple of comments before we continue. <laughs> Okay, so uh, G. Wilson also says, Madison and Nick were staying with the autos the whole season, even though Travis's death was caused by their beef with Taka's people, but somehow people don't want to deal with Strand. It's weird. Yeah, exactly. Well, and okay, so I want to hit on that one a little bit because it looks like, I'll give this episode one thing, and it's the, at least the people that we're talking about, and it's acknowledged in the show via dialogue again, <laughs> that when they put Madison and Strand together, they acknowledge that, well, we're looking, we're really just two people looking at the same mirror and, and noticing the, sa- the similarity in between each other. But but Troy isn't that much different from that. And so they're all looking at the same mirror. It's like that Spider-Man meme where they're all kind of pointing at each other and mm-hmm. they're all Spider-Man. So I like that part of it. And so to G. Wilson's comment, there's something to your comment in that. Well, yeah, that's obvious because they're they're all in a way acknowledging the, the sameness in each other. And that sameness is in a way caca. Okay, so Thomas says, <laughs> let me just say it. If Strand had said, quote unquote, take that suck on it, end quote, it would have had a completely different meaning. You should watch what you say on the show i'll read it you tried to say that so monotone <laughs> <laughs> i got so excited because it was wrong quote, quote unquote unquote quote, lois unquote. says i feel like they just throw to the ending together and they really just don't care thomas says accept the recycled footage g wilson says denies now the fifth actor from the show to direct an episode behind colin lenny aisha tyler and alicia demon carey from last season g wilson says i love your character so much but i feel like they've been set up even before the crossover happened for some reason and that's true by the way we heard about lenny's crossover i think at the beginning of yeah the beginning of the season of season eight and look at how distant they feel compared to everybody else yeah and i'm hoping this this end of this last half of the season at least resolves that part and I think they might. Oma was fired Jason Cohn says on Facebook. David Carranza says 
talking about going off with a bang, Carranza says, that was a whisper, not a bang. And then he, melting mm-hmm. head at face emoji. <laughs> Coleman saved it for me, Carranza said, though. Strand and Frank are almost like Carol and Zeke with finding a son and raising him together. And Strand would be, I guess, the Carol, right? He had this terrible past where he f- people over. And- Accurate. Well, that is Frank's son, though, right? Klaus is yes, his son. Yes, it yes. is. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 I also want to say that Frank is a much better pairing for Strand than Cole was. Oh, I yeah. was thinking about Cole too. Yeah. Yeah. He does mm-hmm. resemble Cole a little bit. Yeah. I want to say something. Well, I want. I wanted to say <laughs> something. Is it cotton nice picking? Because it's okay. Because it. Oh. I wanted to say something nice about this episode before I just go off the rails with my how much I want to burn wood. Well, that's the goal, right? (laughs) I felt the whole time until Madison came and screwed everything up. I felt, oh, there's the bitch now. I felt like Victor was being completely genuine. I agree. I think he was really happy. He was really doing something here. He was doing what he really wanted to do at the tower. At the he tower, just yes. He just but didn't a know negative how to do it. He did it the right way. Right, He right. did it the right way this time. This to Madison's point, it wasn't about me or it wasn't about, whereas the, the tower was all about him. It didn't matter the type of people, the quality of people he took in. It was all about what he wanted and there was no specific yeah. purpose. But he did it right this time. Well, yeah, I mean, but realize because it wasn't about him and he was trying to bury himself, his his past himself, himself, along with all yeah. the other dead people. He recognized that that the man he used to be is terrible and he was trying to leave that in the past. And yet something. And yet it, what? Something he something I he found was trying to get Madison PF out of there before she yes. burned the place down. He did the right thing. I fully support. I fully support him trying to hand her over. <laughs> <laughs> The person who said everybody deserves a second chance, the line that everybody keeps repeating was mm-hmm. Victor's. Was also Althea's. Mm-hmm. Was it, when, when did she say that? Because she, in 408, she gave Madison the second chance. Well, Madison but even just still. ripping lines off everybody. Well, no, Victor. And it has her own. Well, she heard it from Al, too. She's like, yeah, I like the sound of that. I'm going to take it. I'm saying this to make a point, though. It's very interesting that Victor sneaks this <laughs> line in. This is to your point. He's he's great. He's buried himself. He's trying, he's trying to be a better version of himself. But in a way, Victor being Victor saying everybody deserves a set it's almost as if he's planted a seed he's trying to plant the seed of his own redemption with these new people in case they find out later on down the line but it's like it's already too late you know you've grown up with them you know how much he cares about you and loves you etc etc and so in case they find out everybody deserves he's just subliminally told people for seven years well this is all a place about second chances maybe they'll forgive me as well he's known these people and been with these people longer than he's known Madison and Mm. here's the thing that's true had Madison and woken up and been like oh you're Victor Strand and then he said no I'm not and then she had just been like oh let me sit back and see what's going on instead yeah. of blowing his spot yep. talking crap to his kid about him oh. you don't know your dad I was like shut up yeah, like I why wouldn't you... want your ass there either. Get her the hell out of here. Why are Karen? you so intent on ruining this? Right. I don't know. That really <laughs> bothered me because they were friends once upon a time. So for her to know, because does she really know the stuff that happened between Strand and Alicia? I don't know that she does. So that's the only thing that bothers me about this episode because that's what I wrote down. She knows what happened. It doesn't of seem Morgan. like it though because she doesn't. Right. She doesn't put that together further towards the end of the episode. So that's the it only. Just- Thing that really she goes me. to show that she is not she's not a good friend why and why is she so angry why is she so mad at him like she is hostile yeah. so there's an answer to that to Bridget's point I actually thought the same thing too and I thought in my head as I was watching this okay the reason why she's like this is because she knows what happened at the tower because of Morgan and dealing with him and finding out from him she's gonna ruin this place too just like he ruined the tower for everybody else but then you find out like you said at the end it's she didn't really know that much and no so and it's he was explaining like, to her at the Oh, well, this guy's been a con a con man before, and I assume that even though I haven't seen him in many, many, many years, that he is no different than the man that he was all that time ago at the beginning of the end of the world when we were all acting crazy and for ourselves because we don't know any better because we're human. That would have been like Daryl coming to care, coming to Henry and being like, yo, your mom murders a bunch of people. You don't know who she is. You don't know. Sh- 
about your mom. You don't know about your dad. You don't language. know what the hell. He's, it was just the worst. I hate. No one wants to be judged and remembered for the worst decision they ever made. And that's what Madison's doing. She's like holding everything over Victor's head that he ever did in the past and not taking into account anything that's happened. Like she she doesn't know this guy. Like I said, she hasn't seen him in and almost a decade. she didn't bother to find out. She just started spouting her mouth off. Yep. You are Victor Strand. You are Victor Strand. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Are we going to sing a song? No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, this is why I actually asked, the, why I bothered to ask the same question about Quinn after every episode, because now was 12 years. It's possible for somebody to reinvent themselves in 12 years. I mean, he didn't because he used his child to get to a woman. So, you know. Disagree! But still. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's true. <laughs> but he regretted it, Bridget. He slipped. Listen. Yeah, I, I think he regretted getting caught, but yeah, it's right? fine. It's true. It's true. He I regretted getting true. his hand chopped off and bitten by a walker. <laughs> that, that was it. I want to know why everybody automatically believes everything Madison says and sides with her. As soon as she speaks, everybody believes everything she says. Klaus says, he says this to Strand, maybe you're not who I thought you were. And right. maybe you don't know who she is. Like right. you're believing everything she says. You've known me as your dad all these years. This woman shows up for an hour and all of a sudden you believe everything she's saying about me. Well, they you already sort of explain that. Woman Teenagers. <laughs> but... <laughs> but see, that's the thing. That's the folly of Victor had planting that seed of second chances for seven years. You'll notice that and this is something that I have a problem with as well, is that this community has has welcomed ever since I don't, I'm assuming ever since Strand came because he's the one who planted the idea he specifically was the one who planted the idea of second chances with this community and ever since then and this is the one thing that i really liked about this episode you learned so much by how they treated the old man who had the infection on his arm it, it, again it's like the negative tower first of all it's not about calling up on a phone very impersonally from far away no they greet him in person they say hey let's get you fixed up let's give you something to eat. you don't have to do anything in return and obviously his infection is clearing which means he's been there for days so you learn all about how how opposite this was in the tower. Are you sure it could have just been magic? <laughs> yes. To your point, passage of time is very nebulous. Well, but, no, I mean, I'm just saying we're in the apocalypse. Maybe the medicine is stronger, you know, like kids age faster. Maybe the medicine works better. <laughs> and that's why people can take ciprofloxacin and feel better an hour after they take it. Anyway, saying. that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is, didn't it occur to you at some point that how has a community like this stayed alive as long as it has? Because, and we know the Commonwealth, and I think that's an outlier, though. I just feel like all of the stuff that happens in this episode proves all of that wrong. That how have they not encountered a group that that's... had to be already there before Strand showed up, right? They must have already had some sure. kind of because they said that they were there right when it happened since, since yeah, it happened. The so time. they had to have some kind of place Protocol? already going oh. when Strand got there. Did he improve yeah, yeah, yeah. it? Maybe did he change it? I don't know. But I'm, I'm just saying, like, it, there was already something there. He didn't come in and build that from scratch. Well, and it didn't seem like he was, like, any kind of leader. There was very clearly a board of people making decisions for this place. No, no, so forget about the strand part. strand part was really just the second chances line that they keep saying over and over again because they make it a point of saying, oh, he was the one who implanted in Klaus and everybody else that everybody deserves a second chance. That's all I wanted to say. But as far as this community as a whole, to Victor's point about you don't know these people who are on the radio, they could be dangerous. We know the truth. Because it's Daniel. But objectively speaking, he's not wrong. How, why are you assuming everybody on the well, radio, oh, they need help, so let's help them? So I mean, so I was just thinking about that as well. <laughs> Okay, can I, yeah. can I just say <laughs> one thing, though? I don't want to diminish what Strand was saying and just say that he's trying to implant this idea as a way to cover his behind. I think, honestly, he does believe this. No, I, I think mm -hmm. so, too. I think he's mm -hmm. come to believe that he, he feels like I deserve a second chance. Now, I don't know that he does deserve a second chance. We've seen him time and time again take advantage of, of situations, but I do believe that his heart was in this. It would surprise me if this was a long con. It really would. Hey, the dialogue dialogue that he uses to describe the people that died, who he was trying to help, the people that were on the rafts. He said something to the effect of, my name, Victor Strand, my name killed them. It was the me that they didn't want to take help he from. He said, I didn't want to be Victor Strand after that. I, he said, I hated Victor Strand. And then, right. yeah, I, I didn't want to be Victor right. Strand. Which is to say, I just want to bury that part of me that is irredeemable. No, listen, we had that question at the end of season seven. Is how are people going to, and this, is, and this is a huge problem with this being the last season 
season. Wouldn't it have been great to see that tension? Wouldn't it have been great to see how they didn't trust him? Because this is the thing we were looking forward to. How were they going to res- resolve this? They're like, yeah, of course. Let's just gloss. Let's just gloss. That's what I'm feeling like we're robbed. And which is why I asked the question, could it have been that they just said, nah, listen, Fear, you've you've run the gamut. We're cutting you off. It's yeah. like season 11 of The Walking Dead. We're just going to cut you off here. You're going to have to figure this out. They're like, you're, you're done. Bye. And that's the best part. That's the part I wanted to see. The fact that they waited to announce that the final two episodes were going to be aired together, which Oof. brings me endless frustration for so many reasons, because we had talked about doing a big final viewing party, but because it oh, fell right. on Thanksgiving weekend, we were like, well, we can't. And now all of a sudden, they just now announce it with five, I have four weeks. I would have four weeks to plan it if we were still doing that. Right. That's not going to work. And so we're now <laughs> we lose that opportunity to spend that time, one, together, but two, to do something for people who have stood by this show and have appreciated right. this show and, and have we stayed in the last season and a half. I am insulted by this writing and I'm insulted by what you've done with these characters because they deserve better. Yes, they do deserve better. But what you were saying about the watch party, we should have something after the strike ends. We should have like a uh, post-strike fear celebration. All the good times that we oh, had on nice. fear. Yeah. Dwight's fajitas. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what that is, really. Unless you've been watching since season five, I think. Yeah. Is it five? Yeah, it was five. Yeah. Dwight's father. Oh Dwight's my fajitas. gosh. Anyway. Dwight's fajitas. <laughs> Dwight's fajitas. It was the end of an episode, too. It was like it was like right at the end. Best typo ever. The best of Sh- Sharon D's typos. I was in the chat then. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's, and that's when I knew. <laughs> I think, actually, that might have been it, too. It was amazing. I had Klaus's haircut in the 90s. <laughs> I, I, I had that. I had it too. Wait, you you did that haircut hairstyle for one of our interviews, if I remember right. Was it Mo? It was at Christine Evangelista. You did like this swoopy thing with oh, your hair. I don't know. Swoopy I thing? just used to have it. I used to have it in the ponytail on the back with it shaved all around the sides. Yeah. Yeah. I had long hair too. I had hair. Klaus is in the he's living in the 90s. Or I that was, was ahead of time. That was a very 90s look. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. classic yeah. 90s oh, yeah. look. Oh, yeah. But you know what? And so Mario. To, what is the point of introducing Sarah? Yeah, I know. Yeah, and again, the wiki has confirmed Rabbi Kessner, Sarah, Wendell, even Maya Vasquez, who were like, oh, Senator Vasquez's wife, and she was looking for her kid, and Dwight, the dark horses saver from the walkers, the radioactive walker. Oh, Stop. Candace Barley is her name. I still follow her on, on Instagram. It's great. I mean, there's symbolism here. Do you want to know what Anton's name, what the etymology of Anton's name is, by the way? Anton? Sure, Dave. Sure for Antonius. It means priceless or praiseworthy. So all Victor was looking for was worth. Sad. Did you happen to catch the books in the stack? I wanted to, but you know, Charity, to your point, I was like, I don't really care. But did so, you? Yes. <laughs> The one that was on top was Still Life with Breadcrumbs by Anna Quindlin. So it's about a woman who was famous at some point for her photography. And as she aged, her husband's left her. She's having trouble keeping up her bills. She can't afford her apartment anymore. So she sublets her apartment and she goes to stay in a cottage out in the woods. She's not really prepared to live out there. There's like raccoons in her attic. Metaphorical? No. She calls a guy out to help get the raccoon out of her attic and they end up dating and fall. It's a love story, whatever. Oh. But I did tell Take a screenshot of this. Quinlan's novel makes a case for seizing control of your life. Quote, people froze you in place. More important, you froze yourself, often into a person in whom you had truly no interest, she writes. So you had a choice. You could continue a masquerade or you could give up on it. I thought that was very appropriate for Victor. Right, right when Troy is about to hammer time him. He's like, Actress Strand. You're, that's that's another thing, Okay. Is everybody supposed to know? They say his name like, that's Victor Strand. Like he's supposed to be famous or something. And then at the end, he's like, he took his spinach. I'm Victor Strand. Like, like he's <laughs> Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Strand. He's going to just flip back and forth. He's Jamie Tart. <laughs> he's Jamie Tart with the signal. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Oh, yeah. From Ted Lasso. For those who don't know. And he did this in season six as well. The first time he met Howard, he's all buddy buddy with him until he saw the explosion. They were like, ah, ah. Because he told him he was Morgan first. Yeah, he did. But you notice in this episode, oh, right, he said he was Morgan Jones, right? I am Morgan Jones. It would have been great <laughs> if he did an impression of him. But anyway, so, but you notice at the beginning of this episode, he's, by the way, and that's closer to what Coleman Domingo's voice is, the Anton voice. It's very soft-spoken. It's like, it's like very, it's very, um, it's almost, 
almost musical. Well, it's like Stephanie Utrez, who played Rosa on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, and yeah. She was quiet her in real the voice. first season of Twisted Metal. Is yeah, insane. Her real voice Same. is insane. Megan Mullally on it's Will like and Grace. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. That's yeah. That's that's yeah. She puts that on. Right, yeah. right. In previous interviews, in earlier seasons, he's talked about Strand's voice being of particular variety. He's He has to actually actively go to a baritone and this and do that and i'm a swinging a, i'm a victor strand like kind of like you said like oh, oh you wait, started out strong there david yeah it, it sounds weird. like you're supposed to know him right that's that's the well. that's, that's my the point. point the way they keep right. saying it is like is he supposed well, to be famous dave or something? he's a <laughs> confidence man so that's that's really what it is the voice people saying his full name all the time it's it's a whole it's a whole thing it, it's that's a that's his personality thank you that's the easier way to say that it's like keep saying his name over and over again and the only people that have any sort of reaction Action are the people that already know him yeah. like no one in that hotel is like what no you don't see anybody like whispering like oh victor oh my gosh i've heard stories about victor strand like wasn't he the guy knows, that had that tower cares. in texas <laughs> yeah like, nobody yeah, where yeah. Are they even know i am victor strand. <laughs> anyway okay can i just mention there was one thing that really irked me i just got to get it out of my system okay just one just turn off the lanterns oh my god thank you <laughs> the whole thank entire you internet so much. just turn them that. off yeah. just turn them off because guess what they can see oh, you're screaming. in the dark surprise yeah, yeah. Oh my surprise gosh, while the they're yelling time. at each other at the top of their lungs and trying to you we need to be quiet you gotta put them down the quiet <laughs> If you watch The Walking Dead World Beyond season two. Anyway. Good old Felix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to hear something interesting, though? Did you catch the name of the tour bus? Marshfield Tours. No, Marsh Light. Marsh Light Tours. I looked it okay. up. It's not a real thing. No, it's <laughs> not. But do you know what mar- a marsh light is? Yeah, it's gas coming up out of the marshes. It looks like fairy lights. Willow wisps. So yeah, what are will o wisps? They're what people refer to as marsh ghosts. Atmospheric light, like you said, with gas, probably, maybe. Seen over bogs and marshes that are confused for ghosts, aka ghost lights, and can often cause fishermen to lose their bearings. I was just thinking to myself, okay, well, what if the lights actually throw people? No, I'm not making excuses for this. Shit, no, no, <laughs> no, we're not doing that. No, that's what the dead marshes were based oh, on. Oh, that's in Lord cool. Of the Rings, I didn't know because that. of the, the lights that would come the up out of the marshes. marshes. The will o' wisps. Mm. Well, and the whole point of that is that they saw the light as a will. It willed the fishermen towards it because you think that's land, landfall. Mm, mm-hmm. You think that's a town that's nearby. So, you, okay, if I keep heading for that light, it'll take me to a town or whatever, take me back to the shore because it's so dark and that's the only light that's available. And so, what ends up happening is they lose their bearings and they get lost. And some some of them die out there in the marshes and the in the bogs and stuff like that. So, which I don't know what that means for this episode. Well, I mean, it does say something about the german tourists who end up stuck right? you're in a bog you get stuck yeah and there's not there's nowhere else to go but they're also so in savannah that. in the marshes so yeah yeah i did like that the bus was that was like kind of a nod back to season two the bus entry into a community it's a community that nick goes to it's where oh, he meets colonia uh, luciana yeah oh the school bus yeah yeah so i thought that was really cool because the way that they walk in the back and come through the side is exactly the same way and the walkers were on one side and that was how they defended their community it's the same thing plus the hotel looked very similar in my opinion to the hotel in that season as well in mexico so there I was a lot of was. yeah i did too like, at first i was like that's week. weird why would he go back there yeah. but yeah i was just i think it was just meant to be like reminiscent of all that a little kind nod of stuff yeah to those yeah here's a question why german does coleman speak german they're like let's just showcase this for him or something maybe no i thought it was interesting imagine being a tourist you're in a foreign country and you get stranded here forever that would be extra terrifying for these people i think it's a great creative premise at least just throw out there yeah well, it would on the be wall. realistic it's... too yeah, i just wondered if anybody had any ideas why they chose because it could have been any tour tour you know any tourist yeah, nationality they could have been from any country yeah yeah Maybe Coleman they felt like the soccer was just really pivotal. <laughs> so it had- something great about coming just right off of the first season of The Walking to Daryl Dixon, where everybody spoke French. And <laughs> They're like, well, we can't this, use France. German. So yeah. <laughs> damn it. I was going to do French tourists. <laughs> that brings us back to World Beyond coverage. The comments made about Jadis when she says one of the first things that she did was create like a language to bond them together. Makes right. sense. He ends up bonding to them in that way, in a different right. way. Ideology, language that binds and yeah. blinds. Right. What better to convince yourself that you've changed by submersing yourself in a different language, different personality, different voice too. Again, I'll, I'll bring this up again and again. His voice is different. His voice is more 
smooth and less it's baritone. More it's, it's more his real voice. Yeah, exactly. I mean, especially with the bird. I'm sorry. I, I don't know who you are. I'm sorry. I'm not I don't know who this Victor Strand person is. <laughs> the bird made me I'm think sorry. of the pigeon How did she guy? not get the hint after he hugged her and then was like, no, I'm not Victor Strand. She's an idiot. Anyway. I, she's, she's like a bull in a china shop or she's just. I knew that she got it. It's just like, just go with it, lady. It would have been smart to step back and watch what was going on and go along with it and figure out what was going on instead of just hollering sorry i'm, I'm gonna beat a dead horse here there's a reason for why she was the way she was and i'm not gonna say it was done particularly well although they did hammer the point and it's because i'm just like you and we've said this on the show a lot in prior seasons of the walking dead mostly actually it's the you hate in others what you hate in yourself i hate myself so much for what i did taking all those kids from their parents trying to be some pre be something else and here you are what thing do you have over these people that you've had over them for years probably it's the separation of the both it can't be it can't be you how are you still alive and so she hates that he's been allowed to reinvent himself there's just no way i'm gonna let him get away with that because she so can't sad. get away with it for herself she hasn't seen him since the diamond yeah wow mm. yeah that's and that's like i said it's and not she it's wouldn't been even no, know nine she didn't years know for about him having his tower. like getaway plan either yeah he told her he told did her. He? Oh, yeah, no, he told yeah, her. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, then yeah. I guess that's why she's yeah. still salty. No, I mean, because they had gotten over that by the time the all the crap went down. At the, yeah, no, of course, of course. And then didn't she do the same thing? That was when she said everybody deserves a second chance to him when he was yeah. going to yeah. take the... And it wasn't supplies. all that foolhardy to have a plan in place. That's, that's really what it was. The just-in-case, I think it was, motif. Unless it happened off-screen, I don't think anyone has filled her in about what Strand has been up to as of late. Well, we don't know that she is privy to the whole tower situation and, and what happened there well it's clear that they didn't yeah because because of, of what she says at the end if she was alicia's mom and they were all traveling together so it's entirely possible morgan filled her in a little bit it seemed like morgan tried to be really vague about everything though because it's like otherwise it's just like a bunch of bad news to share and i think he didn't want to leave her hopeless yeah i think it'd be easy to say like well alicia was dying so she's dead now yeah he didn't say that he just said she's a fighter essentially and that would suit his personality yeah i can't just, think yeah, of why reason too much that madison would be so angry at strand right now based on how they left things like i said it's again it's the whole you hate in others what you hate in yourself why does he get yeah, to well, reinvent himself she's when a I can't? fully grown adult put your big girl pants exactly. on exactly well this is what i'm talking about this is where that self-sabotaging right thing. comes in she's so annoying there's like a real quality about her that is super self-sabotaging i don't know why but it's but happened time she's and time super again charming <laughs> I don't see it. Why Why does everybody side yeah. with her then? Why does everybody believe everything? Well, again, out? that's very no easy because it's the Rick because effect. Because you start a, the series yeah, I mean, with yeah, the Rick. She's the main character. So that's really easy. That's it. Yeah. But see, that's the thing. When you get a character, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like the antihero. How much can we inflict on the audience of this character's personality within a certain boundary so that they don't rage quit? And yeah, for many people, including me, I mean, I'll even say it. I didn't I wasn't bothered by any of this. It takes a lot to bother you. <laughs> no, well, I mean, but Madison in particular, again, this is all within her character. Everything that she's doing Dave, in this you're episode. You're all about even... story, but their story they're giving us is crap. Well, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't get to that part, but even that part, they could have done the whole, you hate in others what you hate in yourself a little bit better and tied that in. A, did at the end, but I don't think it was enough to, I don't think they understood what they were doing when they well, were, when they were the dialogue. for how every other thing is that they do, why take it <laughs> easy on that one? They don't care so much. They couldn't even be bothered to create a new villain for the end. They just resurrected a dead one and brought him on the show. <laughs> Albeit, I, listen, it's it's somebody that I think a lot of people wanted to see, though. I mean, maybe That's not true. any of you. They don't care so much. They couldn't even be bothered to give him a decent scar. He's got like a little pock mark on the side of his head. It could have been a lot gnarlier. Right. Why isn't his face all mashed yeah. up and stuff where she hit him with a hammer with a blue could've eye? A <laughs> like, they just they just don't care. They didn't care. They needed me on set. <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> they could have drawn a black X on his eye and it would have looked better than the, the blue William eye William and the pock mark. <laughs> Like in cartoons when the dead characters just have yeah. X's on their eyes. Just... 
<laughs> just cross that one out. Yeah. I want to repeat what she Wilson said in the chat because this is hilarious on so many levels. But when you say it like that, it reminds me of the light at the hotel in season two. <laughs> Good call because there was a light at the top of the, the <laughs> hotel in season two that Madison turns on even though everyone tells her not to. And guess what mm, ends up imagine happening? Imagine that. <laughs> a ton of people show mm. up. It, But luckily one of them was Travis. So that was great. And the tower at season seven, which I didn't even put those two together that season mm -hmm. seven had the big light on top. I didn't even put that together. So thank you. That, that it connects it with the with the hotel. The yeah, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't either. Yeah. When you said that, all I could think of G. Wilson's was the, were you talking about the lantern? <laughs> <laughs> Well, didn't they bring the light to the... No, they didn't. Actually. Anyway. It's fine. Carol said Madison is self-serving too. And... Uh... Mm -hmm. Carol Jameson. Hi, Carol. Yeah. By hi, the way, Carol. from Relishing the Dead. Uh... Yes, hi, Carol. Hello, Walking Dead Eternal. I don't know if anybody said hi to you earlier. Oh, hey, Walking Dead Eternal. I'm sorry, but Troy's an idiot, he says. <laughs> <laughs> which by the way i thought of not an idiot but i thought this all of this this whole production it's hard to believe that there isn't some sort of brain damage, brain damage going in yeah i'm just saying well, dude looks really good for getting Dave, slammed in the face with a hammer i'll say this the brain is a really miraculous thing and it can it's not that miraculous it can reroute itself to do the same functions through a different path neural pathways are incredible it's a really interesting piece of science but i guess the only reason i say that is because i was in the hospital and they said that i was probably going to be a vegetable and yet here i am yeah and i'm not oh <laughs> no, you're great <laughs> I'm not about people at all. You're great. That's why you're here. So we asked you Unless to come on the show. Unless everyone near and dear to me is lying to me, this is pretty much how I was right before. We did a whole yeah. ceremony. I can get past the the brain damage part. Like whatever. No, but no. I'm just saying. I think a little up. bit plays into it. The personality. His or the, face the, the, the would be messed up with a hammer to the face, and then and then a damn explosion, and then he lay. You know, he laid there for a while. He didn't get up. No, it, it should be gnarlier. Well, just like Madison, we were never going to find out how they were paying Kim too much. They had to. <laughs> cut the makeup budget i mean yikes salt salt <laughs> i need water for this salt hold on a second <laughs> thomas hits on something very interesting that sharon and i, sharon and I by, both caught along with the montage of bringing the old man in and getting the meds he needs blah 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 and sitting him down and just before he's getting his food to schnitzel whatever it is and this is, of course is a little bit of a time disparity the sequence that you see of them making the frittata in the kitchen is reminiscent of the holding in season six they bring in the things they chop the vegetables the sweet potatoes which you actually see in the garden earlier the schaffer in, in german and then <laughs> is the swiss chard that they're chopping up and then down to the frittata popping it onto the plate same sequence as the holding except for the lack of grinding bodies in the beginning for mulch oh yeah i saw that on TikTok. Unless we miss something. Saw it on TikTok. Someone was like, this is a shot for shot. For shot. Mm -hmm. Just reuse I thought it was clever. footage. <laughs> just but it's all to illustrate the negatives. Like Instead of hiding out in a bunker and exploding the, the on top of the world. No, we're letting people in, keeping people out. So that's the thing, Dave. Like everybody in the comments, you know, that were being facetious was saying it's not reuse. It's a it's a callback. I don't think it is a callback. Well, it looked a lot cleaner than the holding. The filter wasn't. I on think it. they reused the set. They just you're took saying, the same you're saying set. They used the same footage. I they just, saw it side by side. It looked identical to me. I just think they used the same. I know, set it wasn't identical. In this film. It wasn't the yeah. same vegetables too. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if they brought in the same actors to do the scene. The other scene they showed the faces, but in this one it was like the neck down. Just one little note of interest. One of the books in the library was a cookbook. Everything opened and we see like the vegetables vegetables with the German writing and like we hear the speaking German and everything and then we see Strand my first I was I was embarrassed but then immediately realized what was going on I'm like what the hell did Strand get to Germany <laughs> 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 I think it was easy to think that, especially after yeah. Daryl. It was yeah. the beer bottle balloon. He just floated over there. It was a coming right now. off of Daryl Dixon. Yeah. Like my brain went to like him being in Germany. Yeah. And then I also wanted to say how <laughs> bummed I am that Troy's return got spoiled because I think that would have been a really cool been good reveal. Cool. Yeah. Good job, AMC. Yeah, if I didn't already know, that scene would have been like, oh, like that would have been huge. I know. I'm just going to say this out loud. A nice sprinkling of moments from this latter half of the season. Again, latter half of the season it spoiled for me. I know some key things that are coming up that sound interesting that I can never talk about, which spoils my point of view when I'm watching these episodes now. Yeah. And so I stopped it's... watching the sneak peeks. I stopped watching. No, the, I had them. The, like, somebody came into my and, like, DMs and told like me. Oh, I thought oh, they came into your them. personal space and told you. They came to my house 
house. Was it me? And they tied me up no, to a chair. No, it was when we were we were somewhere. <laughs> we were- no, that was <laughs> no that. Was, so there's that and yeah. recently. Oh, and now again. Oh, and okay, recently, cool. no, no, that. Okay, now we've seen we've seen a little bit of Troy's army, which I can now talk about a little bit. <laughs> but <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Troy's arm, and I was like, he had no, that both was arms. Alicia's. That was yeah. Alicia's. Well, <laughs> did he just join? <laughs> did he join the No Arm Club? <laughs> well, oh, yeah. the, the day is the day is it's not over yet. Is everyone else calling bullshit? Uh, Troy killing Alicia? Yeah, I am gonna 100%. call bullshit on it for sure. Bullshit. And you know what? Hurt. He knows it would hurt Madison, and that's what he wants yeah. to do. For all the, the mistrust of your mistrust yeah. of Victor earlier on like he's a liar whatever he's i don't trust him for sure. well he is he's a he's a common he's a liar it's what that's what he does you know what to expect from him right and so that's the thing when you see troy and you see what he's obviously trying to do no that's that's the liar that's right there he's right with the spider-man meme he's no he's a liar no he's a liar no she's <laughs> yeah. a liar and that's why i liked the way even madison giving victor the business of the being of the episode i'm okay with that because of getting troy at the end because you're seeing all these three people being the same way in different ways and reflecting on their prior seasons and the extent of what they've done also then coalescing on this moment with troy okay i'm in but again we'll say it and i have been saying it this episode which is very not on brand for me <laughs> Just the way it's being done. It's just not clicking. Well, you broke Dave. You broke Dave, AMC. You broke Dave. Because Dave will never admit that he doesn't like it. I'll be accurate. I'll just say it wasn't the best. What if Troy is the one that killed everybody when Strand left? That would make things a lot more interesting because then the writers can pin the malevolent force on Troy. I don't think the show cares enough to give us that deep of an explanation. So is there more to this story, do you think? He have a child that was taken? Because why? Why? The level of obsession is so over the top. Plus, it's been a really long time. He's had a thing for Madison. I mean, he has. Don't get me wrong. Like, he always had like a really weird weird he had that weird thing it was a weird infatuation mommy sort of mommy interested i don't don't like it anyway i I could tell (laughs) oh excuse me that's not enough for this much time to have passed and still be so dedicated to this because I feel like he would have been wronged by someone else along the way and that would have like taken up all of his attention. So is there some other motive that I'm like not seeing? I think we want there to be, but. (laughs) Well, I hope. Like you guys said, he has a weird thing for Madison. Okay, you know the movie The Revenant, the the guy that gets mauled by the bear and. I mean, I I didn't watch it, but yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 Everybody going on and on about it. That's based on a true story, okay? Like, Yes. This man was with two other hunters. They were with a hunting pack and he got attacked and mauled by a bear. And I cannot remember his name. He was left with two hunters that were supposed to wait till he died and then bury him and then catch up with the group. Well, he didn't die. So they waited a little while. And when he didn't die, they just left him there. Like, yeah, we, they went back to the group and told him that he was dead, but he hadn't died. So he woke up. 200 and some miles from any kind of civilization he's been mauled like half the skin is ripped off he crawled on his hands and knees through the wilderness for 200 miles with himself ripped up to pieces drinking water off the grass and stuff to survive and when he healed up he made it a point to go find the two men that left him to die i mean now he found both of them he didn't kill either one of them because he realized that one had just been a kid and the other one genuinely thought he was dead so he, he ended up not taking his revenge. But what I'm saying is revenge can be a powerful motivator. motivator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. And if he I feels like Madison just deserted, tried to kill him, and then left him there to die and drown after he had a thing for her or had feelings for her or whatever, then he went crazy. He could easily be after her with that much motivation. I mean, he was always like motivation. mentally unwell. Like that was, that was a precedent in the show. But And keep in mind that, that Madison played into it hard. She oh, leaned into that hard. I know, it was gross. Knowing she was manipulating him as well. Super gross. But I just kind of felt like, here's the thing. He's also like, you ruined my father's ranch. You did this. Okay, one, bruh, you're the one who led all of the walkers there because you're so pissed off at your brother. Like, and Alicia, you hated her because she took your brother from you, but you're like really crazy. All of the things he's like saying that she did, she genuinely wasn't the cause of. Did she play into it? Yes. Did she create more conflict 
than there could have been otherwise. Maybe because she got Taka's people involved. But ultimately was his actions that resulted in the ranch falling. People can do the serious mental gymnastics and pin it on somebody else. People don't want to believe that they're I guilty mean, for anything. So they'll yeah. twist it up any way they can. They can. To put just, the blame on somebody this else. This feels like a bit of a stretch to me in an apocalypse to be this. You guys are treating motivated. Troy like he's a rational actor. Like he's not a psychopath. Well, he is yeah. a psychopath. No, I know. Maybe she should have used a spoon. <laughs> Again, <laughs> instead of a hammer, right? You catch more flies with spoons than hammers. The hammer is throwback to the first season. Here's the thing. It's interesting about what Troy's trying to do is that he's learned a little bit from his time in season three. Notice that the people that he's with are some of the parents being specific here. That guy Russell from the beginning. I think he is one of the parents and he's, he's working with some of the parents. He looked really familiar to me. And Sharon, he said the same thing. I don't think he's from the auto ranch or any, any of those people. People, but it seems as though Madison was reaching out to people and as usual, which I think I think that's actually a little bit interesting is that the parents aren't automatically coming to Padre to pick up their kids because they think they might think it's a trap. And I think Troy I think being that's very the, psycho- fair. <laughs> the psychopath. Yes, exactly. So I'm OK with that. I like that. It makes things really interesting. It's like, oh, they didn't automatically listen to her message at the end of 806. They <laughs> They're like, I don't know if I trust this lady. She looks, she sounds familiar. She sounds like the lady that stole my kid seven years ago. She's wheezing a lot. (laughs) (laughs) She's wheezing a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Well, signature villain move, right? Clearly the same lady. And she's yelling like, Wah! anyway, at she's Troy. She's twirling her mustache. Like it's so weird. Weezy. How can I hear that? Troy listens to this message. Troy reaches out to these parents as well, getting these parents on, on his side to take over Padre. Troy doesn't care about Padre. Troy just cares about getting his revenge. So he sees this as a win-win. The fact that he's not saying the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God, is secondary. It's like he's going to say whatever it takes to get them on his side. He's like saying he's, he's telling Frank. He's trying to get Frank on his side. Frank and Klaus. You see what she did to me? She'll do that to you too. You just wait. It's the same thing that Madison said at the beginning. Oh, Victor, you can't trust I mean, him. He's probably like, not wrong. That's, but that's the point, right? He's not wrong, but he's also not right because intentions matter. Troy's intention is purely t- malice, purely to get revenge. He, f- if he feels like he's giving these people a benefit to joining him, that's more of a reason to motivate them too. Revenge is a motivator, well, and they want revenge too my, for having their kids stolen. My story's better. It's not different than your story <laughs> my story is better though it is better Troy had a kid that was taken by Madison that's much more I, I like that more that's my head cannon. if it comes down to Troy versus Madison rooting for Troy I'm with you on that one Rachel I think both things can very much be true he's way more fun than she is I just want to punch her in the face yep. I am not giving up on Madison yet and I don't think that her performance is that terrible actually what you watched this episode twice but like you, you said there were what? some things in the writing and dialogue that just didn't land and it really it just me- it just messes me up Coleman was able to deliver those lines beautifully <laughs> watching her is like watching Christian Haydenson play in Anakin in the second movie sand I hate sand, sand. I hate sand <laughs> it's coarse <laughs> you're Victor it gets, Strand it gets everywhere it gets in your bathing suit I area. hate Strand he's coarse <laughs> anyway oh my gosh make a meme <laughs> oh I do have one good thing to say yay june and sherry yeah that's what i was trying to get you to keep watching <laughs> that was it that's it yeah yeah so where's the way i don't know and well, carol says yay she wanted Daniel. to bang her head definitely with yay the Daniel. hammer that madison used on Troy, so. <laughs> yes yes yeah can i get that hammer madison can i borrow that hammer what color would it make her eyes because they're already blue what a neat trick oh wait a minute wilson says personally i'm on team madison mainly because of troy bringing up ophelia to daniel what did he say to daniel i think I missed it. Oh, because, okay. So he says, Troy says to Daniel right before he leaves, he goes, or not before, when he first sees him. I did love seeing Daniel on the set, but, you know. We're not I just friends. Love him. I just love him. The we're not <laughs> friends thing was so good. It was so good. That was a moment filled with tension. I was more concerned about Daniel seeing Strand than anybody else. Mm-hmm. Troy kind of takes the stink off of it because yeah. of what Troy says also. It's like, hate to do what I did to your daughter, Troy says to Daniel. Okay. Ooh. I did miss that line. Yeah, that's right. Mm. 
wait, what did Troy do to Ophelia? Hold on, hold on. Well, he is responsible for, for all the walkers taking, like you said earlier, the, the walkers coming and taking over the ranch mm-hmm. or overrunning the ranch. Remember? Yeah. Who said that? Who said that earlier? Me. Bridget did. She got bit. Was that when she got bit? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I thought well, it was after it, the on the way out. No, no, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. It was as they were leaving. Yeah, exactly. Tragically. I mean, he knows a lot for having been gone for a while. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I know, right? Like, how does <laughs> he know that? He's not suffering too much. Well, he's been following them across the country. If you remember the map he had at the end of 8A, he had the map with all mm-hmm. the places that our people. And because everybody's been. talking on the radio. <laughs> Like we've said for seasons. He's got tracking skills too. It's yeah. the US. How big is it? People just run into each other all the time. <laughs> it's like Germany, actually. That's how big it is. Right? It's like Munich. Maybe just to cover my end of things. Like Bridget said, I may be a little bit more on the positive of Bridget Spin, even though it doesn't sound like it. I did like some of the things like in terms of similitude between t- characters. I like that one character's erroneousness puts off the stink of another's. Like, oh, you thought that was bad. Look at this guy. And you thought Madison was bad well this guy's a whole lot worse imho whatever but i did enjoy seeing madison and strang reconnect i like when there's a little bit of tension and a little bit of well i see the crap in you and me and at the end of it there's a there is a it's a bit of a touching moment they're grabbing madison's hand enjoyed that but the way it was constructed was a bit dubious to me i did like seeing a redeemed strand in a way strand having a second chance as well. i loved it and, and truly believing it yeah. right rachel you, you saw it and you're like huh he maybe he is different after seven to nine years well maybe. if i have to choose between strand and madison who i'm gonna pull for it's gonna be strand all the way right i'm i'm not i'm not saying strand isn't gonna you know use his wiles to protect the people that he loves but what i'm saying is i think he actually has people that he loves now yeah. genuinely and i what and you I were saying about daryl right do you remember you said one of the things you said about daryl having a love interest or being with laurent is in the walking dead daryl dixon so everybody knows yeah his risk assessment when it comes to the people he loves what if they're in the way and he might do things differently well in this case it actually might yeah. be a good thing for him it's Strand, not a pebble yeah. in his pocket right right <laughs> season four reference was for those who know <laughs> well, which I thought by the way which I thought of when I thought they were going to the raft by the way when Victor was going for the raft that he came in on thought that that was maybe the reference they were going to go for his just in case raft <laughs> four mm-hmm. by four but it wasn't get out of here you and the raft you came in on <laughs> <laughs> you get out of here you get you and the raft you came in on just want to say how swords and rafts they're not a great combination also time yeah. well you know that raft didn't look like it held up. <laughs> the sword got to it. G. Wilson is saying Troy led the horde to the ranch, and that was what Ophelia, what got Ophelia killed. And then you know, interrogated Nick about it, but Nick lied and said Jake did it. So Ooh, then, because yeah, he's already like, dead. You know. like none Can't of blame makes Jake sense. now. <laughs> Jake was dead. You got to do bad to do good. I did enjoy this episode. I just saw the things that you were seeing and didn't put my blinders on. <laughs> Refused to put my blinders on. I did not like the lack of show don't tell again. Getting stung again again after saying no don't stop singing me in the last half of the season the first half i do like madison i'm just gonna say it out loud i just don't like how they're treating her and maybe <clears throat> here's why you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> it had occurred to me again the whole i hate in others what i hate in myself it hurt it occurred to me that i think little of that is intentional they want to bring you to a place where he's not that great and you have to make it obvious that she's not that great because of what she's done because she took all those kids and you're right there with the parents that are with troy the padre parents they're like, you know, screw you. Let's We're going to take over the place. We're not even going to let you take over these kids and give them a better life. You go. We Padre stay. Padres. Yeah. <laughs> There's two Padre factions. The Madison with the kids trying to find the parents and trying to make it be- get better than Shrike did. And there's the other faction that's with Troy, and he's ma- manipulating for his own ends, whatever they might be. Maybe Bridget's right. Maybe she's not. Maybe we're both right. I mean, either way, it looks like he's manipulating these parents to get what he wants as well. Thomas said my mom needs to make a ton of Madison dolls to keep up with demand. Yeah. Thomas, you need to commission Sharon D to make a Madison They're doll. They're in demand for, for burning his effigies. <laughs> Only if you promise. Does anyone else feel like these Padre kids are going to go the way of the Cackleberry kids? I really (laughs) hope not. I can't handle Uh, the Cackleberry kids are all dead too now. Apparently, (laughs) that is not confirmed. That's not. They were in the nuclear zone, and they just left them there. They built another plane, Charity, and they flew away. As Brian Castrillo says, (laughs) you know, unless we see a body, they had the balloon. No one's gone until they're gone. So you know. God. See, this is why I like being with you guys because we get it out. A little of the gas has been deflated from this episode, so I can watch the next if one. If we get more, be a little bit more open to then it. Then yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. More Frank. More Frank. More Frank, please. More Klaus. <laughs> I'm just going to let that linger for a second. And if you like what you've seen. Creepy Dave. Give us five stars and a frank. Head over to ratethispodcast.com slash squawking dead and leave us five stars and a frank. Fine. <laughs> the old currency of France. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you didn't like. Man, I'm not looking forward to this. But remember to tell us after every episode. And if you really like what you've heard, think about just following for free ko-fi.com slash squawking dead or patreon.com slash squawking dead so you can get the recording schedules. <laughs> when we're not going live, you can be a part of these chats in the real time chat when we do pre-recorded episodes. It's absolutely free to join. All we're asking for you to do is follow on either platform so you can get the recording schedules and know what cool things are coming up. And as you may or may not know, the notes that I took from this episode will be available on Kofi or Patreon for for members and tippers. So if you like what you've seen, consider tipping us as well on ko-fi.com slash squawking dead. And you'll be able to see these notes, the unedited episode recordings for when we do pre-recorded shows and interviews, by the way, and a whole host of other perks. And if you really, really, really enjoy what we're doing, I don't know about today, but maybe we brought up some really good points. We'll consider joining us, <laughs> joining a membership tier on either Kofi or Patreon for as little as a dollar a month to get access to our Discord and a whole host of other perks. At the base level. Whispers and Survivors tier members get shout outs at the end of this, these episodes. Starting with the Survivors tier, we've got Real Ryan GM on Twitter, Lisa Jones 71 on Instagram, or at Jones 86 on Twitter. And of course, you can catch her podcast, Relishing the Dead. Join the Facebook group. It's, it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Fan art Lindy, who you can reach at slash fan arts Lindy. And on to our Whispers tier members who are at Judith.morn on Instagram, Aiden Atkin, who you can reach at ko-fi.com slash Aiden Atkin, at Tyler philip cox on both instagram and x gay twitter and both <laughs> sandy.d.morrison on facebook and at lois.martin.54 on facebook oh and of course lest we forget at i found them rick g on x or twitter that's mitchell Mitch shoemaker g. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on this live stream. Yeah, thank you. We don't often do these things, but we love you. And we wanted your feedback on this episode as well. We love you guys, too. And thanks, G. Wilsons. That's, you're just the cutest. Thank you. I was going to read G. Wilson's comment. G. Wilson said, just wanted to say that you guys are funny and your combos are insightful. I hope you're all doing well. Very well after that comment. Thank you very much. I hope we didn't laugh too much. (laughs) <laughs> it's our You're greatest fear when we 42. cover these episodes <laughs> yeah and you know what we're not gonna always be this spicy but you know when it's warranted well, yeah. we, gotta, we gotta give the devil its due um, i'm not always gonna be this spicy <laughs> that's what i'm saying i was trying to be david nice, is the okay? milk to our spice yeah yeah i'm the i'm the <laughs> peanut butter yeah it's yogurt. usually like spicy spicy mild milk toast and then milk. <laughs> milk toast you know what? I'm going to make milk toast tonight for dinner. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And you know what? Right we'll see you next week. Be spicy. Yes. I'm hoping, just like you guys, that we can start to pick up. This series has got to its gotta leave us with a bang. We know already it's not what we want. We got our news in the first half of the, the season. I'm doing my best to push past it. I'm afraid the only bang we're going to get is me banging the lid of my laptop down when I'm done watching the episode. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. I would have been fine this episode if they did not bring up that line that Victor says that they all died. That's why I said head, in my head canon, I don't know who those people are that died, but they're not the people I love. You know what? It's like that that thing, right? Isn't it that thing? The the glass is already broken. It's like even if my logically know, oh, that doesn't mean whatever, and the wiki is all people, it's not the AMC official, your brain already jumps to that conclusion. So you're like, F you show. Why? Why do that? Anyway, enough of the spicy Dave, because he's not palatable at all. Milk toast. Milk toast. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's what raisins you, in his potato salad. It's what Ew. you came for. It's what you came for. Good night, everybody. We'll see you real soon. And be with us breaking down these episodes shortly. Again, follow us on Kofi or Patreon to join us in any pre-recorded conversations that we have. It's not often that we go live, so think about it. Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon. Good night. Meanwhile, Dave's over here peddling for Patreon.com like... You can have these notes. <laughs> yeah, you can get merch perks too. Bye.